Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, we want to thank our sponsor, Draft and the Draft app. Look, we love this, and every single Sunday we are drafting with you, the listeners. Now, we've set up two listener leagues inside the Draft app. One is a $10 entry. One is a free game. You can play them both with us by downloading the Draft app on the iOS store or Android. And when you sign up, just put in the promo code BALLERS, and it will automatically add you to our two listener leagues. We've got some cool prizes we're giving away. So check out the Draft app at playdraft.com slash BALLERS, or just download it and put in the code BALLERS right now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from the FantasyJocks.com studios with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Welcome to the show. Ooh. The energy. We got to get it up. It's up. We got to no, get it it's up. up. It's up. I've got more energy than Jay Cutler on a Monday night. <laughs> oh. Not hard. Jay Cuddy, he, uh, he hurt his smoking hand. I've got more yardage than Ryan Matthews with two touchdowns. He did have two touchdowns. Ugh. Two glorious touchdowns. Two glorious <laughs> touchdowns. Welcome <laughs> to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm Andy, joined by Mike and Jason. Hey. Hola. <laughs> who are both wearing blue. Daba D. Ah, we called each other this morning and said, what What are you wearing, buddy? Uh, Mike is wearing the t-shirt. Jason is more professional. Yeah, you know it. To go with the grammatical... Uh, this is my five four shirt. Yeah, he has he has some. Uh, what did he say on the show yesterday that was being reported? Uh, there, that a lot has happened. No, it was, no, no. Uh, I think uh, today was a good week. <laughs> today was a good week. <laughs> Something like that. Today was a really good week. What? That makes sense, right? It makes perfect yeah, sense. It's great. It's a Jason Speaking Moore's of <laughs> today, it is Tuesday, September twentieth. We are heading <laughs> into week number three. Waiver questions abound, and this show will be dominated by waiver answers for you. And so pay attention if you have lost any of the 75 players. Say what you down. have. What you and have it, lost. It only continued last night with Jay Cutler's injury. Nose tackle for the Bears went down. Something happened to, to Kadeem Carey as well. Kadeem Carey. And Jeremy Work, Langford workhorse. fumbled for the first time in his career. Workhorse Kadeem Carey. I, I believe you mean starter who, who Kadeem Carey, who got the first carry. Yeah, that's because of his last name. Yeah. That's required. So the quick question was going to be some reflections on the Monday night game. However, I'm going to use this opportunity to get back with you, the listeners, about the debate we had yesterday. Oh, man, a hot debate. People... People were uh, heated. Whew. And it, the abridged version is a trade was agreed upon in a league. McCoy for Adrian Peterson. McCoy played on Thursday, so the trade couldn't process. And the debate was whether or not the trade should go through. Now, I was alone in the studio with you two hooligans on the other side of the desk disagreeing with me. And we put it to a vote. And uh, I'm happy to say. 69% agreed with me on Twitter that the trade should go through, that you are responsible for the decisions that you made and that you, uh, you know, it's a trade. It, the, the tra sure. But if you're curious, we did have, because this was a passionate issue, we did have some people write in. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of people write in and weigh in on this. Now, we had, a, uh, we had an attorney write in a multi-paragraph reply. And I'm going to read you a little bit really quickly. He says, there's no question that a fantasy player trade constitutes a contract. Here, one member offered McCoy for Peterson or vice versa. The second member accepted the, quote, bargained for exchange was the exchange of players. Accordingly, there was a contract. The fact that performance was supposed to occur at a later date has no bearing on the fact that an enforceable, enforceable contract was executed at an earlier date. And he goes on to further emphasize my point. Sure. Do you have any feedback from your Harvard days, uh, Jason? You know, or come, have come you talk to me when he wants to talk about bird law? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> all right. Look, here, here's where I was basing my answer off of. When you're in the middle of the week, a lot of leagues have these waiting periods. So I offer player B a trade 
We everything is good. This player, and then one of the players goes down in practice. Now, in my experience, these trades have all been canceled, right? Yes. Then now, why would those be canceled? Just because a player went down in practice, we have already agreed that that we're taking the risk, and there's the waiting period. That why why should those trades be canceled, but the other one should not? Like where where these players are locked. A couple of reasons why that is different. And those can be subject to commissioner rule if, if they need be. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. If your league wants to vote on it, if you want to do something, that's fine. One of the reasons why that's different is because neither player has played a game for the week. This trade was agreed upon with the risk of Adrian Peterson playing that game. And we had a stock trader write in and said this, if you're making a trade and you are aware that the delivery date is in the future, you are taking the risk that conditions will be different in the future. That's why we make trades in the first place, because we think we have a better grasp on future conditions. But that's exactly what I'm saying. During the week, there's a future delivery date of the trade because there is the waiting process. There is the veto period. And then... I'm just for our league. Don't we advocate for no veto period because you make Absol a decision. Absolutely, we do. We do. <laughs> and look, and the thing that we can agree upon in the show is this: sixty-nine percent to thirty-one percent. No, is oh, okay. is that the, the the overall the whole thing was just a bad idea. I don't know why ESPN <laughs> lets you do it. You're hundred percent right on that. We all agreed on that. If and <laughs> someone wrote in and, and said on Yahoo, you can't even do that. They won't let you initiate a trade with a locked player. <laughs> but which, then how will you have a debate on a fantasy sure, football podcast sure. that's so animated and but exciting? In, and I know in our league, uh, I can recall at least uh, one instance of a trade had just processed, and then a player got injured right after. And we, we all got together and said, uh, I think that we like we did a like this the gentleman's agreement of we canceled the trade, so to really? speak. Yeah. I remember this happening. Uh, and it, uh, so it's it, 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 when you're talking about what is fair is fair. Obviously, the, the fair thing to do is the trade has to go through because the people have agreed upon it. It's more of a I'm, I'm taking a, a gentleman, approach. a gentleman's approach of going. I'm looking down upon it saying, hey, you know, like it just the spirit of fun for me. That's just so that's my opinion. I would it. not have the capacity genuinely to ask for the trade to be reversed because I feel like the agreement had been made. I don't think that would be fair of me. I, I, I said that in here. Even though I'm I'm on Mike's side and, and the 30% uh, the side. The losing side. I'm on the losing side of the argument. I did say that if I was the person. And the desk. But if yeah. I was the person receiving Adrian Peterson in that deal, like if I chose to make that deal, I, I would never, let's say I would you're never getting, ask for it to be Let's say you're undone. getting McCoy. Do you have uh, – uh, will you stand that, up and say, yes, look, this that, isn't right? That would I be would really not. In tough. this situation, I wouldn't. In, in one of those weekly ones, I might. If I was the one getting McCoy, I would leave it to others. I would say I <laughs> <laughs> I would just I've, I washed my hands of this. <laughs> All, right. All right. We've got to move on. We're going to get into the news and notes. If you want to follow us on Twitter, participate in these grueling polls. Grueling? This is serious. <laughs> I guess serious it was business. Uh, you can follow us at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us individually, you can do so at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, and at FF Hitman. Oh, it, it just dawned on me. We should let everybody know that that the trade did go through. Yes, yes. it did. He wrote back right away. He said the commissioner so, was never conclusion. Yeah, stamp. The, yeah, there you go. We don't have to talk about it anymore until the next debate. <laughs> you can find us on the web at thefantasyfootballers.com. You can find all of our new articles. We had a burning questions article go up there today. Studs and duds section from yesterday went up. And uh, obviously, obviously, the waivers. The waivers are hitting hard today. So let's jump into the news, and then we'll talk waivers after that. News and notes from around the league. We said on yesterday's show that a number of news blurbs were going to come out with updates on the injuries we reported. Adrian Peterson, let's talk about his circumstances. Because on the show yesterday, we were quoting Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer said some things about oh you might not even miss a week well that's not the case so what is the situation for adrian peterson so it's a torn meniscus that is official what is not official is how they are going to choose to go about uh repairing it there's apparently there's a few options where he can just have the, the meniscus cut and they're saying he could be back as early as week seven uh there's another version of this where he's out for three to four months 
I actually was talking to my brother-in-law last night. We were watching the game. He played college ball, and he actually had this. He tore his meniscus, and he said they they essentially just went in and they snipped it, and you are good to go quickly. But the problem, if when you just cut it like that, then you will you know you're going to have some knee problems later on in your life. Interesting. So timetable wise, what what are we looking at? That we don't know yet. We're okay. looking at either several weeks or a few months. And so that's that's one of the scary things when it comes to waivers is, you know, if you're looking at Jarek McKinnon, if that's who you believe you want or, or Asiata, you have to go, well, how long am I getting this player? Because that determines how much fab you're going to put in, your waiver priority, all that. You know, I think you have to assume a, a, a medium length of time to a long length of time here. Cody Kessler era has begun so in do, Cleveland. Sorry. Do not drop Adrian Peterson. I've had a few questions of should okay. I drop him. Do not drop him yet. Good point. All right. Let's talk about Cleveland's quarterback situation. The carousel continues. Josh McCown's expected to miss possibly multiple weeks. Not going to be put on IR. Stream the Dolphins defense. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Against oh, Cody yes. Kessler this week. Yeah. Who, who's a better play? The Dolphins defense against Kessler or uh, the Thursday night game with the Texans against uh, third stringer for um, the Patriots? What Ooh. do you think? I'm always going to believe in Belichick, so give me Miami. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I think that's fair. That's fair. So what else? What's going on? We've got the Jarek McKinnon, Matt Alziata news. They expect to form a 65-35 split. They expect. I Look. Da of danger. I was on the radio this morning, and when it comes to Asiata, Dwayne Washington, some of these other lower tier guys, those might be the ones I'm buying. Instead of McKinnon? Because I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay most of my fab because the reaction to Adrian Peter the reaction on waivers is often proportionate to the guy that goes down as well. Right. And Adrian Peterson, there's no bigger name than Adrian Peterson. So And if you're the Adrian Peterson owner, or <clears throat> let's say you're one of the owners of uh, you know, Jonathan Stewart or uh, you know, half ha, all these guys that went down, uh, Arian Foster. You, now you feel desperate, and when you add desperation, people are going to put in a lot of money. I know what I'm going to bid on a McKinnon type, and I know I'm not going to get him. Yeah, but that's we'll kind of how it. I feel too. All right, Jay Cutler last night, the throwing thumb, yeah. preparing for a lengthy absence. Do you downgrade uh, Alshon at all? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, you got Brian Hoyer. I, slinging it right I don't I don't downgrade him because Brian Hoyer was great for DeAndre Hopkins yeah I was gonna say is is that really truly a downgrade for that team the difference between Hoyer and Cutler eh, is a sour face yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no oh you're right excellent use of the sad Earth, music wind <laughs> water <laughs> fire no no, no heart. No heart. heart. Danny Woodhead torn ACL. Goodbye, Done Danny. For the season. Ugh. We could have got some really good memes out of that one. We we got a few. I know, but Somebody, just imagine if Danny Woodhead was still there and comes out and puts out a monster performance. Now it's you guys might not know this, but in you know Captain Planet lore, if if you go down, you've got to pass the ring off. <laughs> oh. So who takes the who takes over the heart? I mean, because it would have been Deion Lewis, but he's hurt too. Who gets the heart? What are, wait, what are the requirements? You have to be a shorter. Apparently, in you have to be very small and have overcome long odds. Is Cole Beasley? Cole Beasley gets the heart ring. I th I think he inherited. I it. don't have a problem with this. He can't shave properly. Yeah, I have a problem with his facial hair. <laughs> I look. If you have a different candidate for the heart ring, let it, yeah, let us know. Let on us Twitter. know. But I, I Cole Beasley, it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, I, I that, can I can get behind that this. little scrapper. <laughs> Why the funny thing like he's you know oh, he's so scrappy, and his facial hair is scrappy. Like every sure. everything about him, yeah, is a scrappy man. Scrappy. All right, Doug scrappy Martin. Scrappy do very sad. I, look, Melvin Gordon is <laughs> going to get the ball. Oh man, yeah. Is he worth? Let me, let me put you to the task. Who would you uh, – would you trade Ooh. Ryan Matthews for Melvin Gordon? I would much rather have Melvin Gordon than Ryan I, Matthews. I think I would There's not at even this a, point. A, a close well, question here's the, to me. Here's the thing for Melvin Gordon. 
they will bring someone. That someone else is going to get snaps there. It's not like all of a sudden Melvin Gordon is going to be the the ninety percent snap touch guy. I mean, he's <laughs> the what now? The, yeah, I know that, that came out a little weird. Uh, he just they they will have to find somebody else to relieve him. He, he, he's not just going to be a full three down workhorse Absol- running back. I absolutely, I agree with that. But they're not going to bring someone in who has the rapport and the trust and the pass block right. ability, all of that of Danny Woodhead. So yeah. the the share will go up for Gordon. And right now, the share for Ryan Matthews did Who not knows? look good last night. I, I know he got the two touchdowns, but Darren Sproles was their main running back, it seemed, last night. Bewildering game on that front. And if he didn't get those touchdowns, you're, you're panicking. You're hitting an alarm. That's Which where is if you incredible could actually... because he had 22 carries week one. So I don't know if it was just – Part of the game plan going into I Chicago? Think, I think it was game plan. Or they Peterson looked over at John Fox, who Fox was playing his backup running backs, and Peterson said, oh, oh. oh yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? I'll beat you with my backup. I think this is just, he. you know, he was uh, an Andy Reid disciple. And this is where you've got your main guy, and you're like, why aren't you giving the <laughs> ball? I'm wide awake. <laughs> yes! Apparently Mike snuck this bit of not news what? In, in there. I think Jason might have put that Seahawks in. Seahawks coach <laughs> Pete Carroll was impressed by Kristen Michaels' play. Quote, he looks like he's been shot out of a cannon. No, it is not. He said that? Uh, quote, he looks like he's been shot out of a cannon. That's, like the, the, that's the classic Kristen Michael quote. He had the unfortunate turnover, but other than that, he really hit it well, or he hit it really well, end quote. Yes. Uh, the, it continues. The wheels are falling off the Rolls Royce. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, but uh, I don't want Chris and Michael either. I'm I'm just not excited about this backfield with that offensive you line. You missed the Doug Martin is having an MRI, which on a hamstring, I mean that's I think that's pretty standard protocol for a hamstring. But the 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 the, the rumors in the bushes are that the the Buccaneers might be a little bit worried that it's injured. Any smirks over there, Mike? Uh, Charlie Sims on my bench is looking mighty nice right oh, now. F- fantasy football. <laughs> a, devilish, a devilish game. Put me in, coach. We need help. <laughs> fantasy owners need help right now. It's time to talk waivers, guys. Jason, we need help. Yeah, I know, especially you do, Andy. And um, I want to take a moment here to just say this. A lot of times people listening, I'm not as excited with the waivers as I thought I was going to be digging in. Um, There's no real clear-cut must-have guy. You could say it's McKinnon. But I just want to point this out for strategy because we don't just talk about players here. We talk about the game of fantasy football. Um, You might be okay, and you might not – have any need for some of these running backs. But look at your opponent this week because there are so many people out there that lost multiple starting running backs, right? Any combination of Arian Foster and Jonathan Stewart and Adrian Peterson and all of these guys. So if you're playing against a team that's like, oh my goodness, I have to pick someone up or two people up and start them, then play keep away. That is not Bush League. That is straight up good strategy. strategy. You got to be like the Old Spice commercial. Where he's like, block, 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 block. That's what you do. There you go. That was intense. Uh, all right. So well, they're in very intense commercials. Let's start at the wide receiver position. A name we talked about last week, still only 59% owned, right? Yeah. Tajay Sharp. That's crazy. Played every snap. He did. I believe the closest, and I could be wrong, but I think the closest was like, 36% of yeah, snaps was, for the second wide receiver on that team? It was way under it. He is clearly their number one, but I do think that what that showed – well, Delaney Walker's their number one, as we have a water bet uh, going on that. But um, <laughs> at what it did show you this last week, though, was that while Tajay Sharp is the number one, that that offense for passing, I'm just not sure – I mean, in some matchups, it's going to be great. But through the year, I don't think he's going to be a, a full, every week, trustable starter. Yeah, he's still a rookie, so he's going to have these these ups and downs. Even the the stud guys have ups and downs, but he you should he should be owned in all leagues, at least on your bench. You want to know who else is a rookie that I would – I feel like he's a borderline right now weekly start. Like, you need to have him in your lineup, and this is another waiver wire pickup. He is, he, he is owned in 79% of leagues, but that means 20% of the places out there. You can have Will Fuller right now on waivers. Uh, Andy – 
you have Will Fuller. Do you trust being able to start him now? I have to. Yeah, <laughs> I have to. I have to trust that. He starts uh. on the outside over 100 yards in two games. I think that he's he's definitely a flex play every single week right now. And the thing about Fuller is we see two games in the regular season, but it's a continuation of a very strong preseason. He was a very high draft pick, and he's paying off in every way. And the nice Speed thing, kills. The nice thing about him versus Tajay Sharp is I do think that Will Fuller's the type where you can get him a screen and he can make some incredible moves and burn with speed and, and take it to the house. Um, I, I think that gives you more opportunity in fantasy football where even if he doesn't have seven, eight, nine catches, he can still have a monster fantasy game with you know a 60-yard touchdown run. Yeah, and he, he isn't that eight, nine catch guy. So you are – Counting on more of a a volume, or I'm sorry, more of a, a big play. Type yeah, last play. game was four for 104. Yeah, and we'll see him on Thursday night. So what are some other wide receiver names? Yeah, we let's need to get pay to some to? lower owned guys. Uh, and if you recall, you got to go all the way back to Thursday. I know it was a very long time ago when you're talking in football, but Quincy in Nunwa was a beast. He was a beast. Six for 92. So he got all of his targets. And I think that you need to pick him up in all leagues. Maybe you don't start him right away, but he's just, like I said, six targets. He is a big part now of that Jets passing game, and that's that's what they have. I know Matt Forte got 30 carries, and they're still going to give him the ball, but the way that they really move the ball is passing, and we know that Marshall's a little bit nicked up. I don't, Anunwa's not going to take over for Marshall. He plays a different role in this offense. But it could mean more targets. And Newman was a guy that we've actually liked in this studio for for years. Andy, last year you you Love loved him. him. You loved him this off season, and it wasn't just this last week. Week one, he was great. Yes. Week two, he was great. You watch the game; he's he's often a first read, and with the potential for Brandon Marshall's knee to maybe keep him out. I don't expect it to. But either slow him down or anything, Anunwa is, is is definitely someone that needs to be rostered. I rarely say handcuff a wide receiver. But if you are the Brandon Marshall owner, you can protect yourself for the rest of the season with Quin Quincy and Nunwa because this is a team that does not pass to the tight end. They pass to their primary receivers. So, look, he's worth owning anyways. Why not pay a little more if you're the Marshall owner? If Marshall misses time, re-injures the knee, you don't know what's going to happen. I think Anunwa would be a very, very strong play at that point. And he's oh. played so well. Yeah, I, I agree. They talked about him during the game, uh, they, a Brandon Marshall quote of saying that he's like, Anun was 100% better than he was last year. So you, he's getting high praise from, from B. Marsh. Here's a guy I think that if you need a wide receiver start um, and, and you need to go deeper into you know those who are owned or not owned, Philip Dorsett, the majority of leagues he is available in, Dante Moncrief, it's possible he's not playing this week. And Philip Dorsett on a high power game, you've got that that's the San Diego Chargers against the Indianapolis Colts. High scoring should be uh, you know, if he's the number 2 wide receiver, you know, that's what like a, a low end wide receiver too, definitely a flex play and he's available in most leagues. Philip Dorsett looked great week 1. Remember, he was another first round draft pick. So, uh Dorsett is is a guy I think you could pick up if you needed a, a spot start in a flex this week yeah i totally agree moncrief uh yeah <clears throat> please update us on moncrief he had an mri yesterday we have not heard the results yet from the mri you also have uh jonathan stewart's anticipated to miss at least a week or two we didn't mention that that's a big you know a big story and we'll get into that with the running backs and then arian foster's day-to-day -day, according to adam gase they expect him to miss at least a week though so um so before we get in, there's a couple more wide receivers that I want to talk about here that I think are sneaky pickups. But we want to thank today's sponsor for helping us keep the lights on, the Draft app. We're talking about them all the time because it is so much fun. Look, you have a, you're getting in weekly snake drafts where you can put something on the line. You know, maybe you want to put a little cash on the line. Maybe you want to go with a water bet like I'm doing against the listeners every single week. I'm well, we did a shot to the show. And showed what a three-person draft is like, too. Yes. It, you yeah, can go check out on YouTube. You can go more than head-to-head. -head. You can go head-to-head-to-head -head -to -head like us. But like I'm saying, download the draft app, put in the code BALLERS, and you get a, you're get you in. You're automatically put into the Footballers Leagues where you can play against us and other Foot Clan listeners. And like I said, on Saturdays, get your dad jokes ready. 
<laughs> because I'm, I put a tweet up, I put the call out that we're going head to head in draft for water. And I, you, the way you get in is by giving me your best dad joke. So be ready for that. But this is what I need you to do, Foot Clan. You go to the App Store. You go to on iOS, Android, wherever. You download it. You put in ballers, like I said. You get in the leagues with us. And it's just it is a spectacular way to just enhance. We all want football to last longer. This just makes it a little bit better. Yeah, we love, love, love the draft app. I, I play it every week many, many times. Um, We also definitely want to thank our sponsor, Blue Apron, and tell you about Blue Apron because, look uh, – I'm kind of a food expert around here. I'm known for uh, eating more than anything else, and uh, Blue Apron is a delight. This is a, a company that will basically ship you really fresh, local sourced ingredients with a complete menu, everything measured out. It is a great time. My wife and I, we cook these together. We, we spend some kind of family time. We call them love dinners, and it, it's just it's really, really nice to – uh, be able to cook a fresh home cooked meal and to have it so easy. It's delivered to us. We don't need to go to the store. We don't need to go. Oh, do we have this ingredient or that ingredient? And, and it's really, really fun. And you know, look, we're a family show. We're all three family guys. It, it's been shown that cooking together builds strong family bonds. And so you can do this for less than $10 a meal on blue apron. So here's what we want you to do to take advantage of our code. You go to, uh, check out this week's menu right now. Uh, you get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash ballers. And you're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. It's blueapron.com slash ballers. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Let's talk about Jamison Crowder. Yeah. 3% owned but went 6 for 39 and a touchdown. Was also missed on a wide open touchdown by uh, that quarterback that you love so much. Hey, Kirk Cousins has not looked great. Um, not looked great. He was okay for fantasy, though, last week. Yes. Yes, that's true. So, Jamison Crowder, is he a must-own? Would you rather have him or, let's say, Chris Hogan? Ooh. I would rather have Jamison Crowder, and the reason is targets. Um, Jamison Crowder is going to get the targets there. And right now, there's kind of too many mouths to feed in Washington, but we know this is the NFL, and as time goes on, you know, any one of those guys, Deshaun Jackson has never been a model of health. You know, you, you it, Jordan Reed has never been a model of health. And so How if any, dare you? If any of the, uh, so far, Josh Doxson has not been a model of health. So I like, uh, you know, in, in a high passing volume offense where the targets are already going to Crowder, the talent is there. I, I do like Crowder. I, I like him more than Hogan because I trust he's going to get the ball thrown his way. Some, I think that Hogan is a great long-term pickup. He's, I expect big things out of him once Tom Brady is back. And the aforementioned Josh Doxson, he's free right now and i think that he is his involvement in the in the offense is only going up he had three red zone targets last week that that, that they missed but josh Doxson is becoming involved in this offense he was a very high first round pick highly touted coming out of college i think it's only a matter of time for him to to really assert himself and get heavily involved now it, it begs the question we're talking about jameson crowder and josh Doxson. Is the upside for Deshaun Jackson fading? No, I don't think so at all. The, the pat that is a high volume passing offense. I know Matt Jones got in the in the end zone last week, but clearly it was it's throwing. Yeah, like, that's what they do. I think like a Will Fuller, he doesn't need the incredible volume because he can just take one to the house. He's he's more of the big play potential. Um, the only other wide receivers I would throw out there. Um, personally would be Victor Cruz you've seen him be very involved and he's healthy 100 percent of snaps yeah he's he's playing um I also like Tyler Boyd I mean I think I said uh earlier as the season goes along he'll get more involved he was six for 78 this last week he's available everywhere so uh, those are guys I would look at let's talk about running backs the meat yes. the meat of the show everybody is is missing a running back these days we need somebody to sign we need somebody to play for me, the headliner by far is Charles Sims. Now, he's owned in 65% of leagues, so you might not be able to go get him. But if you can, what type of fab budget would you spend? Ooh. Certainly, you'd burn your first waiver on Charles Sims. Yeah. We've talked about Doug Martin's injury. But Charles Man. Sims is somebody who is already a viable flex play or in that category. Now, you're losing Martin. Yeah, I, I have been fine starting Charles Sims when Martin was there. Um, obviously this isn't a long-term 
injury for Doug Martin as far as like a season ending injury. Uh, but I'm not worried about when Doug Martin comes back. I still have value in Charles Sims. So for me, I feel like I'm willing to drop, if he's on my waivers, I'm willing to drop 30, 35, 40, uh, depends on my team needs. But he's also one of those guys where if I don't have a need at running back, I'm absolutely still uh, burning my waiver or, or putting in you know a $20, $25 bid for, for Sims. He should not be on anybody's waivers. He shouldn't have already been on people's waivers. Yeah, I agree with that. And then the other headliner is clearly the Minnesota backfield. What do you do? We know Jarek McKinnon, athletic freak, spark scores just out out the wazoos for Jarek McKinnon. I want regular fantasy scores. But, yeah, that's that's the issue is we've never seen it where the team, Matt Asiata does not have juice for football, but he gets it done, and the team clearly trusts him. They trust him to, to grind it out. They trust him in catching the ball. When when AP was suspended for the whole year and people were like, oh, I'm getting on McKinnon, it was Asiata getting the, the big opportunities, especially in the receiving game. Yeah, I, I was going to say, if you go back in time and you could make a great wa- Scott and you can make that waiver bid, everybody went McKinnon and Asiata was the right guy to own. And now AP is down and everybody's going McKinnon. And, you know, look, he's the more because talented we, guy. Yeah, we want we want the stars, Jason. Yeah, if. Look, if one of these guys <laughs> could r- replace a top five back, it would be McKinnon. And that's why people are rushing out to get McKinnon. I will grant you that. But it's probably not going to happen for a couple of reasons. One, who do they trust in, in important pass protection situations? Asiata. That's who's going to be there. Who is expected to be the goal line guy, very important for fantasy? Asiata. And so even though McKinnon might get more carries, fantasy value-wise uh, – they're probably 50 50 and I you know I agree with what you're saying Andy McKinnon's gonna cost you a lot and Asiata how much do you need to bid to to grab Asiata uh fifth 10 bucks yeah 10 bucks is what I was thinking like I think if you bid 10 in an average league you're gonna get him if you are the Jonathan Stewart owner who's going to miss and he's going to miss some time are you signing Fozzie Whitaker or are you signing Cameron Artist Payne Oof. and I'm taking notes um (laughs) Look, I I've, asking I've, for a friend. Asking for a friend. <laughs> Since he was drafted, I've been Mr. Cameron Artist Payne, but I don't believe it's going to be him. I I think Fozzie Whitaker will get the opportunity. I'm not in love with either of these guys, especially when you consider that this current week coming up, they're playing against Minnesota. Yeah. So I don't think any of them are going to be relevant starts this week. I think they'll eat into each other. And then, you know, are am I really going to pay up? expensive for uh maybe a spot start two weeks from now until jonathan stewart gets well, back here's well, the thing. it might be more than that and last year we saw when stewart went out you're right neither of these guys was very effective from a fantasy standpoint i said this on the radio this morning too the unfortunate thing is when you guys go down there aren't these dedicated ball carriers right behind them that are going to take all the carries for me if i wanted to take a shot and i look you guys will probably oppose me on this if i wanted to take a shot on a handcuff this week it's jay Ajayi. He has a matchup with the Browns. He, I believe he will have the opportunity. They don't. I, I realize Kenyon Drake had two carries and scored last week. Yes. But Jay Ajayi still had nine touches. He had the fumble. I think it's going to be Ajayi. I'm willing to water bet anything in that realm of, of carry or touch totals. Because I think Ajayi is a, is, is a good spot start this week, he, and I don't think you have to pay a ton of money for him. Look, it's he's going up against Cleveland. He should be uh, the predominant ball carrier involved in the passing game. I agree with what you're saying. Personally, and this is, uh, you know, com- coming out of the draft, we know I loved Kenyon Drake. As soon as Arian Foster went there, Drake, you know, died to me because uh, <laughs> right. he, he plays that same pass-catching role that he was not going to be involved in. But if Arian Foster is out, Kenyon Drake is that big play, uh, nose for the end zone type of running back that is great, great at catching the ball that I think is the guy I want. Now, if I had to start one of them this week, it's definitely Jay Ajayi. But I think Kenyon Drake is going to be, you know, $5 and I can have Kenyon Drake. I want him on my team. I don't think the team likes Jay Ajayi, right? I mean, they, they didn't even bring him to the first game. They're like, yeah, you're whiny and also we don't need you. So if if J.H.I. Jai comes out, fumbles again, you know, he lost fumble last week. If Kenyon Drake takes over, I think Kenyon Drake is a, is a really great talent. He's not built to take a huge workload. 
but I, I think Adam Gase could get him involved. Both guys should be bid on and owned. I feel like it's necessary for us to step back here and kind of give an overview of the running backs. Who is your top – who would your top three guys be this week on the waiver wire? Ooh, my, and I know that puts you on the – Let's take Sims out because he's probably not there the in spot. most. All right, yeah, let's take Charles Sims out because you're right. So okay. who is your who are your top three guys, objective situation, you're spending money, who are they? And I, I want to remind you of one name before we do that. I think there's two names to remind of. There are. Shane Vereen's one. Yes. Because of Rashad Jenny's situation and oh. his general, like, he has a baseline of workload anyway. The, the other name, not to be lost, is Kenneth Dixon. Because we've seen Terrence West and Forsett be not really fantasy productive. Share the workload. I just think down the line, Kenneth Dixon offers an opportunity for an actual workhorse in that offense that and an offense that can move the ball. Yeah, Kenneth Dixon, this is a great week to pick him up. He's not going to cost you anything. Nobody's running out to sign Kenneth Dixon right now, especially while people need to sign running backs that are starting. So put a $0 bid or a $1 bid on Kenneth Dixon this I'd week. I'd put a one. Uh, yeah, put a $1 bid on him. Grab him. He's, You know, that's the thing is like when you say what's my top three – he would definitely be I, – I'm putting a $1 bid on Kenneth Dixon if he's available in every league. He's like, that's number one, but he's not really the most important. So are we talking like who do I want to start this week. this week? This week. Yeah, this week. Let's do this week, top three guys. Okay. Then I would go um, – for this week, I would start Ajayi first. I would go Shane Vereen second, and then I would go Matt Asiata third. And the reason I'm doing that is because if we're only talking this week against Carolina, the Panthers are who Minnesota <laughs> plays. I, I don't expect McKinnon to have a lot of room to run. And if they, you know, fall behind and need to get involved in the passing game, I think Asiata might have the better game than McKinnon and he'll be cheaper. The, those would be my three for this week. I, I would take the same three, uh, although I think I would put Shane Vereen above Jay Ajayi. Uh, well, we did, we still don't – Based no. on – it depends on Rashad Jennings' Jennings, might, Jennings might play. But I would change out McKinnon for Asiata in a vacuum, not not considering the spend, just considering the better signing. I think McKinnon's going to have a better game than Asiata in Carolina. You know, he, he's supposed to be the passing down back. Right. You know, Asiata should be the, the bruiser. McKinnon should be the passing down back. And a name also to think about if – let's say you miss on it, everybody. Dwayne Washington, the Abdullah Express, uh, hit a penny on the tracks – and got derailed. He's got a bum. It, it only takes a penny. Have you never heard that? Yeah. That myth that if you put a penny on the rails. All right. Moving on. Uh, no, he, tell me more. He's got a foot problem, and we don't know the extent. I believe on the last I heard it was called a sprain. But whenever I hear a sprained foot, I panic a little bit at because I've seen so many guys. Oh, I just have a sprained foot. I'll play next week. Next week. No, no. This is the week. And then you have Darren McFadden and Allen Robinson, and they never play again for that season. So Dwayne Washington, we he already looks like the 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 goal line back. We know he's going to get work. Uh, Theo Riddick will will see a bit, an increased role, but I don't think that Detroit can't put everything on Theo Riddick and think that he's going to survive. So they got to involve someone else, and that'll be Dwayne Washington. Yeah, I think he's a nice mystery upside play, and of course. The woke one himself, Chris Michael. If the Rolls Royce is is in the shop for the weekend, Chris Michael against San Francisco becomes I'm not pushing the button. Another nice Thank start. You. Thank you. Oh, he man. doesn't. We don't how is to... he a nice start? Look, all of the if praise, Rolls Royce all isn't the praise playing. that you gave upon him last week, he got you like I don't know. No, I, I if agree. Eight I agree fantasy with, points. I agree with Mike completely. If yes, Rolls Royce is out. not playing. Chris and Michael is better than just about anybody on this list because what we have not seen, including week one where Chris and Michael was a starter, is, is one guy. Is one guy, right? I mean, there was almost an even carry split between in week one between Chris and Michael and Thomas Rawls. I would love it if one of these guys was just shot in the leg. Oh, come <laughs> oh, on. Oh, oh, come on. It's what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Abort. Come on. I'm just saying. I'm not no, saying. I'm no, just saying. No, no, uh, no. You need to apologize. <laughs> I ap I apologize. Can, do you imagine? There's a father driving around with his son right now. I don't want them killed. Like, miss the <laughs> artery. What is, no. what is you happening? Are <laughs> you're digging deeper this hole. <laughs> no. This is ridiculous. You can't say, like, I apologize mm. to the families of these two wonderful men, both of what? whom I like. Uh, I don't want them to be shot in the leg. 
I'm just saying that if one of them was completely injured, the other would be really good. <laughs> why can't, why oh. can't you go with, like, he's he, he had to take time off because he had to go, I don't know, you know, serve community overseas. service. Work, work on his degree. Yeah. Shot in the leg. Shot yeah, in the sometimes leg. we go too far. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> All right. How oh. do you how do you transition out of that? Uh let's just talk tight ends. Um all right. <laughs> Jacob Tammy, Dennis Pitta, both had big time weeks target wise. Pitta had twelve targets. Very interesting. Very Dennis, interesting. Dennis Pitta or Antonio Gates rest of season? Antonio Gates. I all think the, yeah. Gates would be uh, too involved in the red zone versus Pitta. Pitta and Tammy are ten percent owned. Who yeah. would you rather have? That is an interesting question. I think uh, just both both have good matchups. New Orleans, Jacksonville. Yeah, it's, it would, it's Tammy this week, definitely for me. But when you're talking long term, you do have to factor Dennis Pitta's health into it. The, you can't ignore it for him. But when healthy, the guy is a beast. He is uh, a le- he's best friends with Joe Flacco. We have you have the Romo Witten situation here with Dennis Pitta and Joe Flacco. And that's Dennis making Pitta, up for lost time. Dennis Pitta was heavily involved. And this is a long time ago for fantasy players. You're talking multiple years, but Dennis Pitta was emerging as a great tight end for fantasy. It really is important to remember that because sometimes, you know, look, he's been so injured that I, I don't give him the respect and, and that, that he's due because he was really good. He was becoming a, a, a relevant uh, weekly start in fantasy at, at the tight end. If he's healthy, and he sort of looked healthy this last week in a plus matchup, I think Pitta is worth uh, worth grabbing. I mean, these are the type of guys that, you know, look, if you've had a bum the first two weeks, you know, a Gary Kobe, Barnage? Kobe Fleener and Gary oh. Barnage, uh, you know, you might hold on to them. This is the type of situation where uh, I might actually roster two tight ends while you hold one and play a weekly start. I'm Gary fine Barnett also just cutting stinks. Well, yes. Gary Barnage especially stinks now that McCown is out. I mean, how does that impact Coleman and Josh Gordon when he returns? And I mean, the the rotating quarterback thing, it looked like, oh, OK, RG3 is down. So now it's great with McCown. Now McCown's down. It's funny, terrible. Very funny stat uh, with Kessler starting this Sunday. That will be five straight games where the Browns have a different starting quarterback. No. Yeah. Because they back. ended the year with two. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Five Has that ever been games? <laughs> <laughs> that can't have ever happened before. I don't know. It reminds me of uh, the old Cardinals when we would just be rotating quarterbacks. Oh, wow. That is terrible. Terrible. So what is the latest on Virgil Green? If you're a Virgil Green owner, you, would you hold him or would you just let him go I am, and go grab a, uh, uh, you know, a Gary Barnage if I he tell gets you, dropped? Or, I am the Virgil Green owner, and I'm if I can get Dennis Pitta – You'll let um, him go. I'm going to drop green. Yeah, I would do that too. What about for Clive Walford, who had a career best game, six for 50 and a touchdown on seven targets, more involved, only 30% owned. Mm. He's interesting. Because I like young guys that have upside like that, that, that were drafted high, that want to be involved in the offense. Yeah, I want to see him solidify himself as the starter. That's where the, there's the worry for Clive Walford is I need to know that he's going to get the snaps. And the targets were great. But you're also talking about a very high-scoring game for Oakland, which maybe maybe that's the new normal for Oakland, where we've seen two weeks back-to-back. Of, well, we'll talk about that in just of, a minute. Sure, of the defense getting torched. So Clyde Wolford is interesting. I'd, I would much rather have Pitta or Tammy or even Kyle Rudolph with Sam Bradford, who throws to his tight end. Kyle Rudolph had eight targets, and we know that he can score touchdowns. So if Sam Bradford can continue what he looked like against green bay then rudolph could be a every week start too jason can you give us a few defensive streaming starts this week before we get into the uh streaming quarterbacks yeah we uh we talked already about miami but i i think miami would be my number one waiver claim he's they're going up against cleveland at home in miami so i mean you've got a a third string quarterback coming in to your house and your noise I mean, you want to talk about turnovers and pick six and that opportunity. Miami is the team that I'm looking at the most. Obviously, the Rams offense is hapless. So I think Tampa Bay uh, would be another good start. And then, you know, look, the Giants D was not good last year. But this is why we tell you, you know, year after year, defenses change. And so far, 
I think the Giants D's looked great. They shut yes. down Drew Brees this last week. They had a good week one, and they're going up against Washington, who has, um, y- you know, the thing about certain certain offenses are really uh, conducive to a defense scoring points, right? And Kirk Cousins and the Washington Redskins are the type that, you know, are uh, if you want to predict defensive teams scoring touchdowns, I think that's that's a good matchup. Yeah, they'd be high on my list right now until Kirk Cousins – or uh, not until until slash if Cousins returns to second half form. Full stream ahead. All right, it's time to give you our streaming quarterbacks. Jason, what are we looking for with a streaming quarterback? So with a streaming quarterback, and I don't think we've said this this year, but normally what we are trying to aim for is 250 yards and two touchdowns. We feel like if you drafted well and you, you know, were were in that streaming quarterback range, you're going to get enough production out of your other roster where if you find a guy off of waivers who can get you 250 yards in the air and two touchdowns through the air. Um, <laughs> well, no, I say that because sometimes, you know, you look at the Tyrod Taylors where they can do even more. Maybe they only get one touchdown, but they're also running the ball and that touchdown came on the ground. If you're in a standard scoring league, it's, it's even better. So uh, if you get that, and obviously, hey, if you can get even more, uh, we've had some of our You're willing of the to week, accept it. But that's like the baseline. You want to make sure you get out of a streaming candidate. I'll give you my guy that I think I am happy uh, rolling out there this week. He's only 20% owned, and that's Ryan Tannehill. Apparently, I'm all on Miami. He's at home. He just came off of an incredible week coming back against, you know, he was on the road uh, against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. They got down early and he threw and he threw almost 400 yards. They had a chance to win two touchdowns. Uh, you have Devonte uh, Parker Parker back. And so he looked good. Um, maybe Kenny stills drops fewer balls at home. I mean, that's a hope, but you also have <laughs> Arian Foster out this game. So the running game might not be able to get going as, as much. I, I still think they'll be able to get it going against Cleveland, I just think it's a plus matchup with a guy on the rise. Ryan Tannehill can, you know, he can go out there and put 30 yards on the ground as well with his legs, which you're just always shocked. Every time a quarterback runs, you're just shocked how many points that scores you. 389 yards, two passing touchdowns, six for 35 on the ground last week, 29 and a half uh, fantasy points in our league format. Yeah, that, too I mean, bad. that's great. Not too bad. I'm going with Matt Ryan, Manila Ice. Look, I'm, you mean I'm, the number two quarterback in fantasy football? I that's am, only owned in 48% of leagues? I'm staying in the flames here. We've got two, so he's officially heating up. Matt Ryan could be on fire. And you know what's a, well, a well, good mixture to getting on fire? Playing against the New Orleans Saints. I understand it did not work for Eli Manning last week, but I'm still on board with this tactic. Matt Ryan owned in 48% of leagues. Last year against New Orleans, Matt Ryan put up at least 302 or just a shade under 302, or even better, in, in both matchups. Obviously, you got to watch the health of Julio, who's dealing with, uh, I believe, a calf strain. But right now, Matt Ryan is hot for fantasy purposes. And that Where it's kind of nice for, for Ryan is the defense isn't stopping anyone. I expect Drew Brees to put up a bunch of points and for Matt Ryan to have to keep pace. And Matt Ryan gives you those one or two uh, mistakes that makes him have to put up even more points on the board. So I'm going with Matt Ryan, who's widely available. I'm going to go with Marcus Mariota. He's going to be at home against the Raiders defense. They gave up 45 fantasy points to Drew Brees, 36 to the aforementioned Matt Ryan, and now takes on Marcus Mariota. Now, if I were to tell you, well, well, let let me have you guess. Where do you think Marcus Mariota is at the quarterback position thus far through two games? Through two games? I would guess 15th. He is 15th. Oh, nailed it. He is 15th. Now, he hasn't, uh, you know, blown the doors off, but he's been a 250-2 guy through two games. Now he gets Oakland, who's given up 500 yards of offense in each of their two games. What? A, it is a perfect, yeah. a perfect matchup for Mario to have some success. And, look, half that success might come by passing to DeMarco Murray and Delaney Walker and finding his way down the field, but it doesn't matter. Can I ask you a question? No. Sorry. All right, moving on. Uh, no, what's up? Um, now that you've broken up with Gus Bradley. Yes. And you obviously have Tennessee Titans love. I have Tennessee Titans love? Uh, I definitely think so. Yes. I think you always have had some Tennessee Titans love. Uh, you mean the almost uh, upset of the week? The you, team that just beat the exactly. Lions. Exactly. Okay. Have you thought about writing like pen pal letters to, Dan, uh, to, to Malarkey? 
No, I don't think so. No? I know I couldn't email him because he probably doesn't have an he doesn't email. Have no, email. no, uh, he does not have email. No, but you got a snail no, I'm mail. Not, I'm not a malarkey fan. Oh, okay. I was just curious. You liked no. Gus Bradley, so I figured All bad right. coach. You, you need to have at least one bad coach in your life. <laughs> it's Hugh Jackson. Oh, okay. oh, that's sad. Hugh Jackson's a good coach. He's just at a bad organization. Uh, sure, that's how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Fair that's, enough. That's it's the first. That, that could have been Gus that's Bradley. That's the first thing know. that you it's say. The, no, I said that Gus, Gus doesn't have a chance. Rex doesn't have a chance. Hugh doesn't have a chance. Are I you mean, calling the Bills a bad organization? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I well, look, they want to win, but they can want they, to win. <laughs> no, that's I, they want to win. Like the organization isn't. Look, in the NFL, we I were, would love to win. We were subject to the Cardinals ownership that wanted to make money. Yeah, they did not. Okay, their goal was not to the win. The Bills want that's to fair. win, but they're organizationally dysfunctional, is my point. I'm not convinced that Haslam and Cleveland really want to win sometimes. Oh, uh, no, they want to make money. But I think the Bills want to win, and I feel for their fans, and I think that they have pieces around them, but you're not going to succeed there right now organizationally. I think that's the problem. Jacksonville hasn't been able to do it. You know, Jack Del Rio looks like a hot shot in Oakland. Jack, I love it, man. Because, All these fourth and go. You know, that is why. Because Jack like Del Rio has finally said, hey, I'm going to look at math. I'm going to look at uh, a, a game script. I'm going to take advanced analytics into my game and not this, oh, well, it's fourth and one, so I have to punt or I have to kick the field goal. That's, that's what the book of football says I have to do. What he does is he gets up in the morning. He looks in the mirror. And in the corner of the mirror is this little picture of Jeff Fisher. And he just says, I'm not Jeff Fisher. I'm not because he could have been. He's a perfect he candidate. Very, Same aged, been around the league, but he says no. I feel like Jack Del Rio wakes up in the morning, puts on like a leather jacket, like yeah. the Fonz, pops the collar up, and he's like, "Hey, we're going for it." Well, again. it helps when you're an Oakland Raider coach. I mean, oh, that the, is the black fits in black leather. So just just a little bit. I think it's important uh, to, as I reel us back in. Um, I, I think it's important <laughs> to make sure the with all of these Fonz waiver claims, here. all of these waiver claims. We, Keep following the injury updates on on everybody, on Doug Martin, on Arian Foster, and all of that. I just saw this come through. Arian Foster is just a groin strain, they're saying. He is iffy for Sunday, probably still won't play, but won't miss more than one or two games. With Arian Foster, you can count on nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, if he played this Sunday, I would not be shocked. This is why I rostered Ajayi and yeah. told people to roster Ajayi. I'm not dilute. Well, hey. I'm a little delusional, a little but I'm not bit. really delusional with Foster. I, I've, I've told people just grab a Jai. Am I stu Let me ask you this. Yes. I think that I'm really smart for this, <laughs> but I think that you guys would think I'm really stupid for this. Okay. In our dynasty league, it's, uh, it's a two, we intro. two weeks ago, I went and I picked up Isaiah Pete. That's fine. Because I think there is a world in which Aaron Foster, uh, I know this is going to sound crazy, gets injured again and misses the season, and that Ajayi is not the guy. I uh, Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So, you know, deep, deep leagues, maybe maybe look it up. The, the, you're talking uh, the, the deepest ocean of leagues, of course. I'm just saying. All right, all right, we need to move on and uh, to the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we so, got there. So check this out, check this out. We have uh, – I wanted to let everybody know we did – we did decide we're going to put up the flex rankings for all the jointhefoot.com supporters. Those are going to be up. Uh, we do our rankings, our weekly rankings. They're they're up by late day Wednesday. Let's say usually uh, like five six o'clock on Wednesday. Five o'clock Pacific. Pacific. Um, sometimes a little bit earlier, but that's about when we get them done. And really, when you submit your like start sit questions and things like that, it takes a little bit of time during the week to get a lay of the land versus just you know arbitrarily picking. Like right now, Jay Ajayi or, or Arian Foster. What? Okay. Right. One, I can tell you right now, if you if you tweet at me or message me or do anything on Tuesday saying who do I start, I'm not going to answer. But, and I do that for your good, right? Like I have not done my research enough yet. We do, you know, uh, we we uh, we don't just entertain here. We do a lot of research. We watch a lot of film. We try to make the best, most accurate predictions we can, and we spend the time basically from right this second when we get done with the show until the end of the day tomorrow perfecting our rankings to the best of our ability. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's cool, though. We're adding some extra features. We have our, our projections for jointhefoot.com people, and we have uh, a lot of exciting stuff going on there, including you know the extra episode now on jointhefoot.com. You can actually subscribe to that on your podcast app. 
So check out our community of fantasy football people. They're the best. I mean, sincerely, absolutely, they define what this show is. The people that follow this show, they're like you. They want to enjoy their league. They want to make being a commissioner better. They want to make uh, the traditions of your league better, and they want to win their league. And and so we, you know, we understand. You might not want to tell your friends about us, <laughs> but definitely go and talk to the other people that already know about us right. on jointhefoot.com. So. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this show, for supporting this show, for all the iTunes reviews. We'll be back here tomorrow. We've got a mailbag show. We've got exciting. we got a keep trade cut tomorrow. Hey, and if you need a trophy. I need a to, trophy. You've got to go to fantasyjocks.com with oh, the code football. Let me go over there. <laughs> we know you tight, need tight, a trophy tight. or a belt. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.